So here's my story. So I said I graduated um, 30 years ago and started a job at a small company. I had no idea what I was getting into. But um, what I found out was that my first day on the job, my boss walked into my office and he had this binder. It was full of um, a printout of the software that I now owned, the project that I now owned. He dumped it on my desk and he said, this is your project. Yes, it was all printed out. There was an online version as well on the computer. Um, but seriously, it all fit in this binder. It was kind of crazy to think about that now. Um, and I wasn't going to be able to read it, right? So I don't know why he gave me the binder. In any case, um, this was my project, and I got to work with an engineer and a tester, and it was an analytical instrument um, that did some analysis of uh, elements. Super interesting work. And, um, and it was my project, and it was super exciting and super res- a huge amount of responsibility for somebody right out of school. But I loved it. And um, ultimately, I, I took many different uh, domains after that. So this was analytical instrumentation. I did some work in automotive. Um, and then I decided to go back to grad school. And when I went back to, was going back to grad school, I talked to my boss at the time, who had a PhD in computer science. And he said... Master's degree is fine, Diane. Don't get a PhD. You'll never get hired in industry again. (laughs) And um, I only tell you this story because when I talk to people about talking to you today, I also heard that story. Now, I don't know if this is still true. I know that there are clearly places in the Valley that do hire PhDs. Um, And this boss of mine did have a PhD, if I I didn't mention that. Um, So I do trust what he said, but it was the sense that people would think I was too theoretical if I had a PhD. And I did fight that with a master's degree even. My first job, I had to actually argue that I wasn't too theoretical, which was really kind of amusing to me. In any case, um, my first job after grad school was a human genomics startup, and I loved this job. It was so exciting. The domain was exciting. The software was exciting. And um, one thing that I learned about myself in this job was that I was much less risk-averse than I thought. I thought that, you know, I was very worried about financial security, but I realized in the startup where I didn't know if we were going to run out of money or not, and I didn't know if I was going to get paid at some point, that I, I could uh, weather some of those, um, those waters, right? And so I ended up becoming a software consultant, which is uh, maybe on the far edge of not risk averse, um, and ultimately sort of fell into entrepreneurship. So I call this my accidental entrepreneur stage, where um, I was a software consultant who took on some projects, uh, worked with a partner. We started hiring consultants. Projects got bigger. We couldn't find enough consultants to do the work that people wanted us to do. So we, hired, we had to hire employees. And this is where everything changes when you have employees. And you're looking across the desk at someone and you're saying, I'm interviewing you today and I know when times get tough, you're getting paid and I'm not. How much do I really like you? Um, that's the story of the entrepreneur, right? And, and it's true. Um, you do have to think about those things. But you also learn a lot being an entrepreneur. You learn about, a lot about running a team. I learned a lot about financial statements and running a company. And um, believe me, if you want to talk about healthcare today, it's a big deal. I know a lot about healthcare, <laughs> more, much more than I wanted to know. Um, and at some point, I realized that this wasn't what I wanted to do. I had built this great company with great culture for engineers, for my employees, and I thought I would retire there because why else would I build a company like this, right? But I realized that it wasn't what I wanted it to be. I wasn't doing what I wanted to do. I was spending time looking at cash flow and retained earnings and getting enough sales to keep all the people that were working for me working and then hiring more people when the projects got bigger and then having to get more sales, this constant hamster wheel, right? And this isn't what I want to do. So I thought maybe I just need an infusion of technology. So um, I had been really interested in Scala. I had been doing some research on the side And I decided I would write a book about Scala and try to see if Scala could be um, introduced to to beginners because it was getting a a bad rap as a really hard language to learn. And I didn't really think it was that hard. Anyways, so I wrote a book about Scala and it was super fun. And I realized that, yep, that's what I was missing, that technology piece. So I decided I should probably um, get a different job. 